Welcome to Cinematic Chronicles, where we take you on a journey through the world of movies, bringing you informative and entertaining narrations of some of the most captivating movie stories. At the start of the film, Miles Logan, a skilled thief, is getting ready to carry out a daring heist of a $17 million diamond in Los Angeles. Miles is joined by his trusted partner and best friend Eddie, as well as their driver, Tully, and a new member of the group, Deacon. The plan involves Eddie and Miles sneaking into the building through the air ventilation system while Deacon uses his hacking skills to help them avoid the security cameras and guards. Meanwhile, Tully stays in the getaway car, ready to drive them away once they have the diamond. After Miles gains access to the safe, Eddie heads back to the roof to work with Deacon on the next part of their scheme. As it turns out, the group's new member, Deacon, has ulterior motives. He reveals that he doesn't want to split the loot four ways, and, shocking everyone, he shoots and kills Eddie, causing him to fall onto a police car below. The commotion sets off alarms, and Tully drives away from the building. Miles manages to grab the diamond and evade the guards to reach Deacon on the rooftop. However, things take a turn for the worse as the greedy Deacon points his gun at Miles and demands the diamond. As tensions escalate, a police helicopter appears on the scene, and Deacon is forced to escape by rope riding to a nearby unfinished building. Miles attempts to follow him using the same route. However, Deacon interrupts his escape halfway and demands the diamond once again threatening to shoot him. In a quick move, Miles cuts the rope in the middle and crashes into the under-construction building. The police arrive, and Miles hides the diamond in the ducts while Deacon escapes. Shortly after, Miles is arrested and taken downstairs, where he sees Eddie's lifeless body, leaving him in shock. Despite this tragedy, Miles is determined to recover the diamond at any cost, as he assumes the police won't search the building he just left. Two years later, Miles is released from prison, and he excitedly celebrates his newfound freedom by shouting in the streets. He takes a cab straight to his girlfriend Janice's house with hopes of spending romantic time together, but is dismayed when she breaks up with him for lying about his criminal past. Despite his promise to change and pleas to take him back, Janice shuts him out. With nothing else to do, Miles decides to retrieve the diamond, but is left in disbelief when he discovers that the building where he hid it is now an LAPD police station. Nevertheless, he remains determined to retrieve the valuable gemstone. To set his plan into motion, Miles enters the building and learns that the diamond is hidden in the ducts of what is now the robbery-slash-homicide detective bureau, which requires a keycard for access. After conducting research on the security measures, Miles returns in disguise as a pizza delivery man. He asks to be led into the homicide department, but the cops deny him entry, leaving him with no choice. To obtain access, Miles pretends to start a conversation with homicide detective Carlson and steals his access card. Later Miles brings the card to his uncle Lou and requests that he forge a new one for him. At first, Lou is hesitant to take on the risky job, but Miles offers him a large sum of cash, prompting Lou to agree. In addition to the fake card, Lou also creates a batch and some documents that establish Miles as a newly transferred police detective named Malone. Miles uses his new identity as Detective Malone to gain access to the police station and retrieve the diamond. After accessing the homicide department with his fake card, he goes to the female washroom to access the ducts. However, while doing so, a prisoner tries to escape through the same duct and a scuffle breaks out. The commotion attracts attention, and the entire department arrives at the washroom. Miles is forced to introduce himself as Detective Malone and explains that he stopped the criminal from escaping impressing everyone with his quick thinking and bravery. Miles' act of bravery at the police station draws the attention of the station chief, Rizzo. Despite Miles' apprehensions, Rizzo assigns him to field duty with newly promoted Detective Carlson. Miles tries to convince Rizzo to offer him desk duty instead, but Rizzo insists that brave officers belong on the streets. Reluctantly, Miles joins Carlson on a burglary call. Along the way, Carlson praises Miles for his impressive record which Miles soon learns was fabricated by his Uncle Lou. According to the fake resumes, defused seven bombs, and even prevented a hijacking. Carlson continues to talk to Miles and expresses his admiration for the fabricated accomplishments on Miles's resume. During the drive, Carlson's nervousness becomes apparent as he drives slowly, still new to his role as a detective. They eventually arrive at an auto parts store, where the owner reports a burglary. He complains that a thief stole 36 car tire rims from his warehouse and despite the alarm going off, the police took an hour to respond, allowing the thief to escape. Miles, who had been quiet until now, starts to find the information suspicious. As an experienced thief, he knows how these crimes are typically carried out and begins to analyze the scene. After careful consideration, he deduces that it would be impossible for the thief to break into the warehouse, load 36 heavy rims onto a truck, 
and make a clean getaway within an hour. This leads Miles to believe that the owner is lying, and he starts to investigate the parked truck near the warehouse. As he surveys the scene, he discovers all the missing items in plain sight. The owner is caught red-handed and, after admitting to staging the theft for insurance money, Miles issues a stern warning before releasing him. However, Carlson questions his decision, prompting Miles to explain that sometimes it's necessary to let the small fish go to catch the bigger ones. Taking control of the steering wheel on the way back to the station, Miles schools Carlson in the ways of a true detective, which include overspeeding and reckless driving. But their joyride is cut short when they stop at a store and encounter an armed robber. With no other options, Miles must intervene to prevent any harm from coming to the store owner. The unexpected happens when the robber turns out to be Tully, Miles' former accomplice. The sight of each other is a shock for both of them, and just as they try to recover, Carlson arrives. To avoid blowing his cover, Miles lets Tully escape through the back door. But the situation escalates when Carlson calls for backup, and they corner Tully on the street. Despite Detective Hardcastle's suggestion to call for a SWAT team, Miles disarms himself to prevent his secret from getting out and walks up to Tully to convince him to surrender. However, Tully refuses to give up, prompting Miles to offer him $20,000 and release him after a day in prison. Tully agrees to the deal, and Miles stages a fake arrest with flair. In the days following his heroic act, Miles gains a reputation among his colleagues for his knowledge and ability to foil crimes. Carlson tells the department about Miles' brave action of subduing a dangerous criminal with his bare hands. Later, Lt. Rizzo invites Miles to his office and informs him that the burglary division is seeking a new head and he thinks Miles would be the perfect candidate for the position. Despite being hesitant to blow his cover, Miles accepts the job offer. On the same day, Miles makes another attempt to locate the diamond, but when he reaches the exact spot, he finds that someone has already taken it. The protagonist finds the diamond missing and later discovers from Detective Hardcastle that the hot water pipes burst and flooded all the vents, causing the department to flush out the whole system. Meanwhile, the antagonist Deacon finds out about Miles' release and confronts Uncle Lou about Miles' whereabouts. When Uncle Lou denies any knowledge, Deacon becomes furious, shoves him against a table and searches through his document. Eventually, Deacon finds out about Miles' new identity. Later on, Tully threatens to expose Miles' secret, but ends up getting badly beaten. In the next scene, Miles uses a remote control car to locate the diamond in the air duct above Lieutenant Rizzo's office, continuing his pursuit for the jewel. Miles is caught by Carlson while inspecting the ducts. Carlson questions Miles and even checks his name and badge number in the police records, but finds no one named Malone. Worried about his cover being blown, Miles lies and tells Carlson that he is from Internal Affairs and working undercover. To his relief, Carlson believes him and promises to keep it a secret. Realizing he has little chance of finding the diamond from Rizzo's office, Miles decides to look for an alternate route through a highly secure evidence room adjacent to it. However, before he can begin, Miles receives a call to investigate a museum exhibit that has been stolen from a cargo hold. The FBI is already there, and Miles clashes with FBI agent Gray over which agency has jurisdiction over the crime. During the journey back to the station, Miles uses his expertise and knowledge to deduce that the FBI is searching for drugs rather than artifacts. He explains that smugglers frequently import drugs into the country as cargo, stealing them before they pass through customs. Miles and his team then focus on finding bonded trucks, which are the only vehicles allowed to enter bonded warehouses. The authorities call for air support and quickly identify a single truck driving through the busy streets. Carlson, having learned from Miles, speeds through the city and locates the truck. Despite the FBI's order to back off, Miles and his team capture the smugglers and seize the truckload of heroin at a traffic stop. Later that day, Miles gains access to the evidence room under the pretext of inspecting the confiscated drugs. He finally locates the diamonds and feels elated. Suddenly, Rizzo appears and startles Miles, causing him to accidentally drop the diamonds into the heroin stash. Rizzo then reveals that the FBI will test the heroin. It turns out that the heroin belongs to a notorious drug lord named Jean Lafleur, who operates from Mexico. Miles, unwilling to give up on the diamonds, panics and proposes to the FBI and his police unit to use the seized heroin as bait in a sting operation to catch Lafleur. He further suggests that he will deliver the goods to the drug lord himself. The FBI approves of his plan, and Miles releases his friend Tully from holding before he departs. Once Miles arrives at the rendezvous point, he quickly recovers the diamond, but he is soon confronted by Tully and Deacon, who hold him at gunpoint. The situation becomes more complicated when Lafleur also shows up. The police and FBI then raid the deal, but Deacon takes advantage of the chaos and escapes with the diamond in an armored truck. 
Miles chases after the truck and manages to board it as it speeds away. The police and FBI quickly join the pursuit. As Deacon nears the Mexican border, Detective Woodcastle attempts to get him to stop the vehicle, but ends up crashing nearby. With no other options, Miles tries to swing his way to the front of the truck. However, Deacon crosses over into Mexico. The police and FBI are unable to continue the chase as they lack jurisdiction in Mexico. Miles, determined to not give up, steals a patrol car and pursues Deacon until he catches up to him and forces him to crash his truck. After both men emerge from their vehicles and hold each other at gunpoint, they see Mexican police approaching. In a desperate move, Miles strikes a deal with Deacon. He offers to take Deacon back to the U.S. and give him a cut of the diamond sale if he hands over the diamond. However, once Deacon agrees to the deal, Miles betrays him by handcuffing him to the damaged truck for the Federales. As Miles starts to walk back to the U.S. border, Deacon attempts to shoot him, but Miles quickly turns around and shoots Deacon dead, seeking revenge for Eddie's death. After crossing over to the U.S., Miles is met by both the FBI and the police who demand explanations. This time, Miles claims to be an undercover Mexican officer and says he has to report back to his fellow Federales. But a few inches over the border, he is stopped by Carlson and Hardcastle who reveal that they know his true identity. However, they express gratitude for his help and see him as a friend and assure him that the FBI can't reach him as he is just a few inches over the border. After a bittersweet goodbye, Miles departs from Mexico with the diamond. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Cinematic Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed our journey through the story of this film. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more movie narrations. Until next time, this is Cinematic Chronicles signing off.